Hello, everybody. Hello. We have a special guest today. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophia. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. This is actually my very first podcast appearance, even though I have my own, but I've never been on one. I'm so honored. <laughs> You're the very first guest on my pod. Honored as well. Yay. <laughs> um, We had no time to warm up because we're kind of on a tight schedule. Yes. So we're just going to jump right in, kind of cold turkey. Before we get into the topic, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Sophia. I am 23 years old. I am from, I say I'm from Vietnam, so there's that, but I'm half Chinese. I'm half white. I am a Leo. I really like cats. My favorite animal is a turtle, though. And I live in LA at the moment. Yay! (laughs) Okay, so it has been exactly one year since we've graduated. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about it. Before we get into it, can you tell us a little bit about your college experience overall? Yeah, okay. So for me, I think that college was actually overall a pretty positive experience. I never knew that I wanted to go to USC. Like when I was applying to colleges, I actually was looking at a lot on the East Coast. I never knew that I wanted to live in California. And then when I did apply to USC, it's because I saw it on YouTube in someone's vlog. And it was this guy who just looked like he was having fun. And I thought, like, I'll just throw it in there. And so when I got the acceptances back and then the denials as well, I had a handful that I could pick from and so I looked through them and my family actually, you know, I was lucky to be able to like come visit some of the schools as well in person, which like allowed me to really get a vibe for what I felt like at each school. And so when I was at USC, I just got a good feeling. And so that's how I decided to go there. It was like something totally unexpected. But when I did go, I found that each year was so different. Freshman year was really fun, like defined by fun. I have never laughed so much. I felt so much joy and I made so many new friends. It was just like the experience of putting myself out there so much more than I usually would. And I like had so many funny and memorable experiences with people. Sophomore year, I feel like I started to actually feel as though I was in college. I think I was a lot more school focused. I think I was trying to be more involved in clubs as well. Also was like very defined by me getting into my relationship because we started redating again. And I think that's like when it started to feel like we were really dating and like we started doing long distance. So that took a lot of like my mental space that year. Junior year came around I will say that it started off really strong. I remember the first two weeks of junior year, I was like so positive and I was like, this is going to be great. I'm going to get through this year. And I was really putting myself out there again with different things. I actually even looked into Greek life because I was like, what is all this hype about? I'm just going to see for myself like what everything is all about. And then I ended up joining a sorority. I also ended up dropping from the sorority after like two months because I didn't like it. After the rush of maybe the first couple months and I was like, this is gonna be great. It was so bad. Like junior year was by far like the most challenging year for me because Mm -hmm. one, school-wise, I was taking like my hardest classes. I had the biggest workload. And then secondly, my mental health (laughs) was just in the dumps, (laughs) like so bad. I was dealing with like the most anxiety that I've ever dealt with. I was I think depressed or suffering from some form of it at least like I just didn't like myself I didn't like waking up and the life I had around me even though there was so much to be grateful for like I couldn't find like that you know lens of positivity to like look at my everyday through that all changed thank goodness when I actually went abroad to Italy I think that that really like helped me step outside of myself for a second like it changed you know my whole like routine and where I was I had to make a new group of friends and I stopped being in a long distance relationship finally, which I think was also like really difficult. But my time in Italy was cut pretty short because then COVID came and started. And so I had to like go home to Vietnam really quickly. And I ended up living there for a year and a half unexpectedly, took a gap year unexpectedly, Mm -hmm. came back for senior year. Senior year, I would say was interesting for me because since I had left and then come back, I felt like I was coming to college kind of as like a different person. 
I had a very clear break in mm-hmm. between my first three years and my last year. I think for me, senior year was more calm and like chill for me than my other years had been. I think school-wise, I had figured out a balance. I also lived alone senior year, so I kind of was like learning how to live entirely by myself. I learned that I don't love living entirely by myself. I don't know if I love having a bunch of roommates either, but somewhere in the middle I think is Mm -hmm. good for me right now. And I didn't know that before senior year. Yeah, I don't know. I think senior year, it also flew by. Like Mm -hmm. I was really conscious of the fact that I was graduating soon. And so it was, I think at times hard for me to be fully present because I was so like- This was like looming. Yeah, I was like, oh no, like what's gonna happen when this is done? But also I'm excited. I'm also really scared and all that. Mm-hmm. Also, for the record, Sophia is one year older oh, yeah. than me. Because she took a gap year junior year, we did end up being in like the same graduating class, if you're confused about that timing. And senior year is when we met, obviously. We were only really good friends for like the last yeah. six months of yeah. college. So it's been a year, exactly, today, May 13th. In general, how are you feeling about one year post-grad? First of all, I think the year has gone by really quickly. Yeah. I I can't believe that it's been a year. It feels like I've done nothing. At the (laughs) same time, (laughs) at the same time, I know I've done a lot. Yeah. But it's like, currently, I am feeling motivated. I'm feeling excited. I'm also feeling like there's so much uncertainty. And for me, at least, I don't think I deal with uncertainty super well some people are like a lot more comfortable with it i am not i think that it just makes me like scared and even though i like change i think that when there's so much uncertainty especially like riding on the decisions that i make for myself it feels daunting that's how i'm feeling like summarized i totally feel that it went by so fast like just recently i started saying to people oh yeah i graduated from usc a year ago huh Mm -mm. no i didn't it doesn't feel like that at all like it literally feels like we just graduated still i think part of the reason why was because like the first i don't know maybe like six months post-grad i was still living like at usc because i did summer school and then both of our leases like remember like our leases didn't end until july or june Mm -hmm. so like the first chunk of our post-grad we were still at usc so it didn't really feel like that yeah it doesn't it doesn't feel at all like it's been one full year i feel like now i'm just now starting to get into like a routine like i know what i'm doing kind of now because when do we ever really know what we're doing now i feel like we're entering post-grad era you know like for Mm -hmm. the past year no we were still i feel like i was still a student almost yeah i think that Honestly, the past year, I would describe it more like just a transitional period. Like definitely, obviously we graduated, but it wasn't like you just wake up the day after grad and you're like, (laughs) ah, I'm a full adult. I know everything. Like that literally didn't happen. I woke up the next day and I was like, okay, well, I guess I have all this free time. Like, what do I go do? Yeah. (laughs) That actually kind of leads us into the next topic, which is how do you usually structure your day to day? Mm. What's your... What's your system? I do love a routine. When I wake up, I first thing is I do my skincare and then I eat breakfast like without fail. And then I've learned that working out in the morning is better for me because it makes me feel more energized throughout the whole day. Whereas sometimes when I work out in the evening, the whole day beforehand, I'm a little bit like antsy and I can't focus. Once I have all of my like personal care and like habits kind of out of the way in the morning, I feel like I usually do whatever work is for that day, kind of like late morning or lunchtime to like the evening. And for me, I think work looks really different every day. Sometimes I, with my part-time job, like I'm at my computer writing stuff or in meetings with people. Sometimes for me, work is working on my own podcast or like recording with someone or recording by myself or editing. Sometimes... It's going to castings. I think for me, what I've leaned on is just whatever work is for that day. Like I try and create some sort of structure to my day because otherwise I find that I feel really like blobby. So do you like start every day with a to-do list or like a plan or do you set yourself up for the week or like how did you end up finding your routine that Mm. works for you? 
I used to use a physical planner. I did that until I discovered Google Calendar, like literally this I year. Love Google but Calendar. I discovered it this year. <laughs> what? <laughs> like what? And then I feel like that was just so much more convenient. So I moved everything there. But usually, you know, on Sundays, I will set out my big tasks for the week like that I already know are coming. Like if I have a meeting on this day, I plug it in. If I know that I have to go somewhere on this day, like I'll plug all those things in first. And then I also will plug in like time for personal stuff before the week starts because actually I found that that really helps me to not like overload myself with work-related things and then forget like taking care of myself. So I usually do all that on Sunday and then throughout the week I'll kind of like adjust as I go. I use Notion a lot too for like like a checklist. Oh I want to get into Notion but it's kind of complicated. It is. Why is it complicated? (laughs) I feel like I use it in the most basic way possible. Like I don't use any of like the fun little bits. I just have a table and like I split my stuff into like podcast, anything to do with modeling, anything to do with my job at the marketing place and then personal stuff and like social stuff. So I actually have a table and I plug everything in and every day in the morning, I'll put stuff in to like the different categories to see what my day looks like. And sometimes it's like really heavy on one thing and sometimes really heavy on another. It helps me to visualize the different types of things I have to do every day. Cause I feel like I am very visual. I can't keep it all in my head. Having it laid out for me is very important. We took a little bit of an intermission cause- We're having some technical difficulties. We're having a lot of technical difficulties today. It's the fucking Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Let's get back into it. I don't know about you, but I have come to dread the question. So what are you up to these days? What are you doing? How's post-grad life? <laughs> oh yeah. Like, what do you say? Okay, I actually do have a set response for this because I get asked it, like I'm sure as you do so much. I always say, to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Like, I actually say that exact thing because I feel like it's honest. And second of all, because I'm doing a lot of little small things. And sometimes I feel like if people don't really want to stand there and listen to me go through every single one, I'm like, I'm not going to make us both have this conversation right now. Like, I'll just say, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Sometimes I feel like that makes me come off a certain way to people who don't know me because they're like, so she has no idea what she's doing. But also I don't really care because they don't know me, so. Yeah, I kind of say the same thing. I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I'm <laughs> doing. But I also feel the same. It's like, are they going to think that I don't do anything? Because that's not mm-hmm. the case. But I think I need to like stop dreading the question because in my head it's like, if... If I'm happy and satisfied and confident in what I do, I'm not going to dread that question. And if I want what I'm doing right now to, like, be successful, then I have to be proud of, like, what it is that I'm doing and not be, like, ashamed of telling people what it is. Yeah, I actually completely agree. I do think that maybe part of also the reason why I say I don't really know what I'm doing is because since I didn't have something lined up right afterwards or it isn't, like cookie cutter like a very easy answer I maybe I'm like a little bit afraid of the judgment that I will get from people for doing things however I'm doing them and so it's easier to just say like I don't know instead of opening myself up to that yeah I also think maybe a part of it for me too is like if you tell people what you're doing and you're not successful yet then it's like okay, well, if she's doing this, what if she fails? You know what I mean? No, I totally get you. I was even nervous. And like, I still do get nervous about the fact that like, okay, so I have a podcast, but it's not my job at all. Like, it's definitely more of a hobby. I still got nervous to like tell people I was doing it again because I used to do it and then I stopped doing it. Part of the reason why I shared it was because I want people to listen. I also think there is something in like being proud of the work you do. Like, I I need to back myself, right? But also, I was like, if I keep it private, no one has to know. And I can still get, like, the satisfaction of putting some creative stuff out there. But now that I have said I'm doing it, like, I definitely feel more pressure to, like, like do it well or just keep up with it. And it's, like, even a little bit embarrassing if it doesn't go well. Something that I've been thinking about, we went to USC. And I feel like USC is a very, like, post-grad, you go into corporate. I feel like I've felt kind of, like, a pressure... That, like, I'm not doing what I need to be doing because I'm not in corporate. Like, I don't have a 9 to 5. Even outside of USC, I feel like the general thing is, like, people having a 9 to 5 or, like, a job 
that's like I don't know how I would even describe it like it doesn't necessarily need to be in an office but I feel like it's just like a very clear cut job and I think that that honestly is like an indicator of success in society like people yeah. see that and they're like oh they you know like check off college and like check off the next step which mm-hmm. would be like a certain type of job and the thing is some people will view certain types of jobs as like not really an indicator of success like even maybe view that as like oh this person is so that means they're lazy like that means that they don't know what they're doing that means that they like can't get a job you know what I mean like all these thoughts and I think that there definitely is that pressure because you don't you do want to be like viewed by other people in a way that's like positive and Mm -hmm. I think that veering off of like the traditional path just like takes a little bit more conviction and like what you want to do something that I've been asking people like of our age group that are either still in school or just out of school or have been out of school for a little bit are you the type of person to pursue your passion or like do you know your purpose and are you willing to sacrifice certain things to pursue that or are you the type of person that prefers security over doing something less stable even though it's something that you're passionate about or do you like not know at all Mm -hmm. (laughs) for me I think I'm the type of person that is just like, I have to do something that I love and I'm, I have to make that work. And I also know what it is that I enjoy. I would say I'm for the most part the same way. Like I know when I was graduating or like the month before I graduated, I had a lot of pressure on myself to like figure out what was next because I was like scared probably, or just like, you know, wanting to like have that sense of like, I know what's next. And I don't know like we spend so much of our life working like I'm just like very hesitant to like get into something that I know I will not like or that I'm forcing myself to do I think that's why like the way that I prioritize going about like exploring what I'm into over the past year a huge part of that is like making sure these are things that I have some sort of interest or passion in because like I've tried a couple of different things but I have made sure that like everything I'm even dipping my toe into, I'm like, I can see that for myself. Like I'm not forcing myself into a box just because I feel like I have to. Yeah. As I've been exploring over the past year, I've learned something about myself, which is there are so many different things I could do that I think I would be okay with. Passion wise, I think I have discovered that like- <laughs> We're laughing because my cat is trying to leave my room. <laughs> Look at her. Um, She's like staring us down, like let me <laughs> I think that my, like, passion, I've learned, even throughout college, I think, like, I am passionate about certain types of work. Like, I know I like, I realize I talk with my hands so much. I'm, like, oh, me too. doing this Italian hand thing. Like, <laughs> me too. And then I watch my video, I'm like, oh, oh it's a choreography. <laughs> um, I have learned. I like opportunities where I'm able to be creative. I like using that side of my brain. However... I've learned that there's certain, you know, like creative is so vague. Like there are so many different roles in a creative world. Like sometimes, you know, you're like the person in front of a camera. Sometimes you're a person like in post-production. Sometimes you're coming up with ideas. And I think I'm learning more about where I fit into that Mm -hmm. as I explore more things. Something I've learned about myself recently is I think I really enjoy coming up with ideas. Like I love being a concept person. I love like having a vision I don't like other parts of the process like so much and I think I've also explored like being creative in lots of different ways with all the things that I'm trying um like different forms of creativity and so that too is like helping me to learn what I'm more passionate or what I'm less passionate about also because like the more time I give it I think that you just get like a feeling because I, I think that when I first graduated I was like okay I'm gonna try all these things and it was really hard for me to tell within like one month or two months but coming up on the one year mark something recently that I've been thinking about is how like I'm actually getting a good idea of some things that just don't work for me so much (laughs) sorry this burped I'm trying to hold it in but some things that don't work for me so much and then some things that I'm like surprised by I'm like oh I actually like this way more than I thought I would I just had to give it a little longer than a month Mm -hmm. yeah actually I've always like labeled myself as like a super creative person but weirdly enough, like, I miss, like, exercising my brain, like, in mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. But, and, like, discovering new things that I can do that challenge me. Doing creative things is challenging, but just in a different way. And I feel like my brain is, like, weak. <laughs> because I'm not, like, 
like doing things that are hard for it every day Mm -hmm. and so something I do like I'm reading a business book right now and like there was a chapter in it that was like super math heavy and it was so hard for me to read it I honestly don't even think like I processed it at all but I I was reading it and I was like oh my god I actually miss like learning about things that are hard for me that I don't like learning about you know what I mean because it challenges me and then I do it and then I'm like oh my god I did it yeah I completely get you I think that's part of why I actually I'm surprised by how much I like this part-time job that I have right now because it's in an area or like an industry that I'm not familiar with like I didn't study business in college so I have like very foundational like simple business knowledge I think from when I was in high school but I I don't know like the terminology I don't know like a lot of the details and so when I work with them I'm having to like you know learn as I go and like figure things out and at first I was like oh my gosh like this is just not my area of like expertise like I don't know these things but then as I've been going I have recognized like oh but actually like I feel really good being in a position where I'm like challenging myself in that way because it's been a while and luckily like this role that I'm in it's like I get to exercise the creative part of my brain and the more like logical wordy mathy thinky (laughs) part you know what I mean like the academic yeah like just the two different parts of my brain get to be used for different things and I feel like that it's like really satisfying in a way that maybe doing just creative stuff left me feeling a little bit like yeah no I think I'm like starting to realize that for myself Mm -hmm. like I read every day but some sometimes the books that I'm reading are like shit that I already know like I read Atomic Habits and that's very like psychology Mm -hmm. heavy and like I already since I studied it there was so much in in the book that like I kind of already knew it was Mm -hmm. just nice to like reinforce it and like hear it in a really digestible way but now I'm reading a business book and I did take like one business class in college but In the same way, like, business is more, like, academic for my brain. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually really enjoying challenging that part. I was also writing in my journal today. (laughs) First of all, my hand got sore after one (laughs) sentence. It's like, I don't write anymore, ever. Like, with my hand. But I also don't write essays anymore. And that was something that I found super rewarding. Oh, yeah. Because I was never a good writer. And then I became a good writer because of how much we had to do it. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I miss writing. Mm-hmm. Because it was so satisfying to like have an idea, have a really ugly sentence, and then like refine it. And like make it good. And make yeah. it good. It was like creative in a different way. Mm-hmm. I'm having another thought where I feel like, I think that before I finished college, when I envisioned like what I would do afterwards, I was kind of like judging myself for like certain paths. Okay, so you know how we were talking about, like, how some people, like, if you go into, like, a nine-to-five, like, a stable, good job, like, that's an indicator of success. But, like, to mm-hmm. my mind, when I was in college and I was, like, looking towards the future, I, like, personally defined success as a certain thing in my head. So, basically, what I mean is I would think to myself, like, if I go down the path of just, like, getting a job that, like, I don't love, but, like, you know, it'll be, like, what I feel like is more like, expected and, like, what you're supposed to do, like, I felt like I was, I would be selling myself short, so I was, like, that's not an option for you, right, except for as I, you know, like, continue to explore and, like, learn more things about myself, I'm, like, well, that was also me just closing off, like, a whole set of things because of, like, a personal judgment I made on myself, and really, it's, like, I might be able to find something that I'm really passionate about or into, like in any of these like realms and I just have to like be open to it you know what I mean like yes you don't necessarily have to go into a corporate nine to five also I don't have to like completely wing it and like go fully like creative like freelancing like I can I can do both I can go into one even though I didn't expect it like you know what I mean I don't have to like I almost feel like I judged myself from, like, the flip side before I graduated. And I was like, no, you have to do things this way to, like, you owe it to yourself to, like, go about work this way so you can find what you're passionate about. But, like, I was also closing off a bunch of opportunities from the get-go with that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the thought that is, like, what the fuck am I doing? Um, I've made peace with her. (laughs) (laughs) Like, honestly, I don't deal with it because I think... 
I can't. Yeah. Like, I've tried to. I think that's led to a lot of meltdowns, a lot of, like, anxiety, a lot of feeling insecure. Not to say that I don't feel those things yeah. anymore, but it's just... I've accepted. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And that's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because I think for me, I know it's okay to not know. Mm-hmm. And I know it's okay to, like, not have everything figured out. Mm-hmm. But I still find myself, like, resisting it. Yeah, I mean, even my grandma, who's, like... I think she's 80. I was talking to her about how like I don't really know what I'm doing yet. This was over the summer like last year when I graduated so very kind of on topic and she told me to be honest like I am 80 and I have no idea what I'm doing. She's like I am 80 for the first time like ever and she was like I don't know what it's like to be an old person and she was telling me how like as a young person you never actually understand what it's like to be old even though you know older people than you throughout your life and like of course you can imagine aging And you can, like, think about what it's going to feel like. But she was like, you don't actually know until you get there. And then you start to figure it out. And so she was saying, like, how that's been the case for her whole life. And that was actually very comforting to me because I'm like, well, I'm 23. Like, I'm nowhere near 80. So it's really normal for me to not know what I'm doing. And, like, that doesn't take away from the fact that even if you don't know, like, you can do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, we can all do things. It's just, like, maybe we don't need to have as much of a grasp on it as we think we do. Or, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know that, but it just doesn't always feel that way. Yeah. I think yeah. it's natural. Yeah. So, what did you expect this year to be like? If I think about myself last May, I thought that I would have a more stable work situation by now. I think like I expected myself like I was like within a year like you have plenty of time to figure it out the reality is that I don't I'm still kind of you know I'm not like in a position where I have nothing going on but like I am I feel like I have my foot in a bunch of different things and only now I feel like I'm approaching a point where like maybe soon I'll start to get something that makes a little more sense that's like a little more stable for myself second thing was I did not expect to like tried all the things that I did try this year. I had the intention to explore. I even like wrote that in my journal. Like big intention was to like explore just like your career in general, like opportunities in general. I think I just expected myself to have a lot more figured out than I do. And I think that applies to even like when I was a teenager, I expected myself to have a lot more figured out than I did like within college. And You know, like when you're 10 or 12 years old or whatever, like you look at somebody who's 18 and you're like, they know exactly what they're doing. And then when you're 18, you look at someone who's 23 and you're like, they have to like have everything sorted. Yeah. But now I'm 23 and I'm like, maybe 30, but like, I'm not even going to say that. Like, I don't think so because I meet people in their 30s and they're also still figuring things out and they're still exploring what they like to do and like who they want to be. So, like, really, I don't know if that ever ends. And also, like, going off what my grandma said, like, I think I'm starting to realize that, like, there is. It's just a lifelong journey. Yeah, like, there's not an expectation that I really can have for myself at any stage of life. Yeah, Yeah. no, I agree. When I went into senior year, I was like, I'm going to be financially stable by the end of senior year. (laughs) Oh, my God, yeah, but you did say that. I remember that. Why did I think that? (laughs) And so I was like, no, that's not going to happen. I think I think I went into this year was like, I'm I don't know what I'm going to do. And I got into like, you know, Joe Dispenza and he talks about the unknown a lot. And so I think I always just go into like new stages of my life with like, I'm okay with not knowing Mm -hmm. and not expecting. Because then I think that helps with opening up to like more possibilities because you don't have yeah. like a way that you think things should be i mean going back to what you asked me about like how do you deal with the thought like what the fuck am i doing i think that really relates because like when i said i've like made peace with it i think it is that kind of um acceptance that like you don't have to know and it's it is like so back and forth like you were saying like there is like this sort of discomfort with like not knowing i think it's natural because like i feel like as a human like your brain doesn't like no we hate that right so yeah that's natural but then also i agree it's like accepting that 
I don't know. It's like even when I think about this last year, it's like just like growth in the sense for me that I feel like I've realized some things about life I just didn't know before. And like there's still so much more to realize, but part of it is like figuring out that more people or like all people, more people than I thought, like just kind of like go about life and take it as it goes. And like as a kid, I think I just had this impression that like it got easier or more clear like as you went along. But really, I think it's the opposite. And that's fine because like everyone's going through the same thing. And like that just is the journey of life is like all the uncertainty, like all the possibilities, all the opportunities. And like you just never know what's Mm going to come from it. What is a challenge that you face that you didn't expect to? I think that a huge lesson for me this year and challenge has been learning to be patient with myself. I think I expect myself to do things like quickly, just like being patient with myself and like the time that I need to explore things because part of me was like, I want to kind of like try different things, right? But I didn't take into account the fact that it takes time to explore those things like it doesn't happen immediately it happens a lot slower than I think I originally expected it to I think you know chasing that sense of like okay everything's fine now like that's part of why I feel like the impatience is there you know like I don't want to have to sit in that uncomfortable space but learning that if I want to like give myself time to explore things then I have to also give myself like time in general and I have to be okay with not knowing for a while I think that's been a huge lesson and I think honestly after coming that realization it's been a lot easier for me to like not judge myself for where I'm at in my own like journey of figuring out what I like and what I want to do work-wise because like I'm taking away some of that pressure from myself Elle agrees (laughs) welcome to the show Elle (laughs) She has words to say. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with you on the patience thing. I've had to make that like a full intention for a couple months. Like, just be patient. Building success that lasts isn't overnight. Mm -hmm. And it does take a lot of time. Also, just removing that judgment. I think I have to consistently work on like, sometimes I feel like I have it. And then... Other times I feel like I don't. And other times I think that I have it, but I don't. Like, it's a false sense of Mm -hmm. I know or that I'm not judging myself, but I actually am subconsciously. Yeah, like, constant work in progress, honestly. Like, you can realize these things and still, like, have to consciously work on them. Yeah. Which I think is the case for me, too. But even, like, just acknowledging them or, like, telling myself things to begin with, I feel like has helped compared to where I was, like, a year ago. And, like, expecting certain things of myself that just... Like, it's not how things go. Yeah. I feel like the moral of the story is we've just entered life. (laughs) I feel like. Yeah. We just entered, like, actual life. Like, not that school isn't actual life because there's a lot of valuable things to learn within the journey of school. But no one is telling us what to do now. And we have to give ourselves structure. And we have to, like, not only do we have to... I'm distracted. <laughs> I know, same. This is only the beginning. It feels like we're babies. Oh my god, didn't we say this? Like, yes. Recently, yes. we're like infants. Yes. Not recently. This was like, we had this conversation a couple months ago. Yeah, actually, it wasn't recent at yeah, all. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I we feel, feel like... feel like an like... infant. Mm-hmm. Like, we're a one-year-old young adult. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just like learning to be an adult for the first time. You know what I mean? Of course, we've been an adult technically, like, since you turn, like, 18, right? But everything takes time like to to start and like it's a gradual adjustment like I can't think of anything in life where you just immediately can enter this next stage like nothing happens like that but I think you know after this one year since that's been a lot of the transition it's like now we're actually like in I feel like I'm more like in this stage than I was at the beginning of the year and that comes with I don't know just like even like such simple things that we I think we learned some of these things like years before we graduated too, but just like learning to take care of yourself, like learning how to prioritize things, like learning how to like keep yourself accountable for things, learning how to make decisions for yourself and like trusting yourself to make decisions for yourself. I think that's really hard because like sometimes it feels like a really big decision and I'm like, I don't want to be in charge of my own life. I I wish I could like just like have it picked for me in a way because it's like so much pressure. All these things I think 
are part of like learning to be an adult because when you're a kid you don't have to worry about any of them Mm -hmm. and I think that comes with like graduating from college and being like pushed into the so-called like real world yeah okay I'm trying to think of the if there's anything else I feel like we covered a good amount of everything I have a question for you yeah let's say a year from now you look back on this next year like what do you like do you have anything you hope for yourself like are you excited about anything like can you envision anything not even job wise just in general yes there is something I think I've realized recently that my confidence is really low like I don't know why I think maybe it has something to do with like fuck this is deep too but like my success as like a Mm. young adult like that pressure Mm -hmm. that we were talking about like the pressure of having everything together like I don't have everything together and I feel like that's affecting my confidence in some ways and it's like bleeding into like every area of confidence like recently I found like I don't think I'm pretty like recently Mm. but I mean it happens though like it's it's like this yeah and it's weird to say that I'm not confident anymore because like my junior year I worked so hard to reach a level of like self-love and confidence in my personality and the way that I looked and the way that I presented myself and like my life and everything to say that I'm not that anymore is weird because it's not that that journey is like invalid now you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like now it's just a new journey like we're rediscovering confidence and maybe redefining confidence and I feel like I need to unlock a new level of confidence. Because mm. I, I was thinking about, like, I went and did that shoot with expat. Mm-hmm. And that, in in the way that I see it, required a level of confidence to do. Because I went by myself, mm-hmm. right? So I didn't know anybody. And when I was a sophomore, like, this community was something that I really wanted to be a part of Mm -hmm. and really looked up to and that was intimidating to me like I kind of put that on a pedestal but then to actually like go be invited by them to do something with them like that still required confidence yeah so it's not like I'm not confident right now but it's like I just think it's a new level of confidence that I need to unlock for the next stage of my life like you're like we're always leveling up in some way or another or at least trying to yeah like I think if 15 year old me saw 18 year old me she would think she's really confident but then 18 year old me to me now is like she had so much work to do oh my god okay so I went and did this um I went and taught like a master class this past weekend oh my god yeah in at this like high school in Idlewild and it's a high school so they're all teenagers and they were all like oh my god you're so pretty you're so cool like they were complimenting me and like obviously that's nice and it felt good but I was also thinking about the fact that like if I were 16 too and looking at me right now I would think the same thing as them but Mm -hmm. I don't feel like the way Mm -hmm. they think I probably feel Mm -hmm. yeah sometimes we don't give ourselves like enough credit for like where we're at now or like how far we've come In terms of anything, like, let's say confidence, you know. But, like, because it's gradual, of course, we can say, like, no, like, I've definitely grown. Like, I've become more this and this. But we don't actually give ourselves the credit to be, like, wow. Like, me five years ago, like, honestly would have admired me now for being in this place with whatever quality about myself, like, now. And I think it's nice to sometimes, like, step back and, like, acknowledge that and, like, give yourself, like, that you know just like good job especially in a time of like uncertainty like not knowing exactly like where what you want to do where you want to go like it helps I think to like center yourself and like I don't know it's like nice to just have that like sort of words of encouragement like from you to you yeah what do you want to work on in the next year kind of to go off of that question Mm -hmm. I think that I want to work on trusting myself more trusting the decisions that I make, not second guessing myself so much, even if I have doubt, just like kind of like going with it. You know what I mean? Like if I make a decision, like just like supporting myself. (laughs) And the second thing I think is I want to work on, it's kind of in the same vein, just like once I know what I want to prioritize, just like going for it. I think a lot of like the indecisiveness that I face stems from 
me like trying to balance like well what about this what about this what about this but like when I really sit down and reflect and I'm trying to think to myself like what do I prioritize for this like time in my life right now I want to be able to take that priority and like make the decisions that align with that and like just go for it with more conviction whatever those priorities like may be that's a good one to close out because I think we've really done a thorough reflection on this past year like was it was this year good good for you yeah I think so I think I learned a lot about myself I feel like even though not all parts of the year were easy like I didn't expect that either but I actually am proud of like where I am right now I'm proud of like even like emotionally like learning how to deal with like feeling confused learning how to deal with feeling a little bit scared and like I've had so much like random bits of anxiety here and there throughout the year and like so many times where I've literally sat down and been like, oh my god, like, what am I doing? Like, I've actually said that out loud. And I've been like, what am I doing? Like, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. But I'm really proud of, like, when that happens now, I'm like, you're fine. Like, you don't know. It's okay. Yeah. Like, just this day and then the next day and, like, everything's fine. So I do think it's been a good year overall. And I'm really excited for the next one. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> Thank you for coming on, Sophia. Thank you for having me, Ariana. We're ending this episode here. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, this actually might have been an interesting one to actually watch. But still, (laughs) hopefully you didn't. Hopefully you, like, filled your time with something a little bit more productive. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. Sophia has a podcast. I do. Double text on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And then at double text podcast on instagram yeah what are you talking about on there recently i've actually kind of pivoted it really goes along with the theme of your episode because i'm trying to make my podcast um, more focused on just like navigating post-college in general i talk about a bunch of things because i feel like that covers like a lot and any person in their early 20s can like experience a whole range of things in their life so i have talked about like habits mental health relationships friendships college all things yeah i think i'm trying to figure it out still as i go all of our links are down below we appreciate you thank you for listening hopefully this was like not all over the place but (laughs) thanks for listening anyways or watching bye